let me start off by saying do not build this. There's no reason to do so, it's a terrible value, terrible support, and blah. That being said, it is a really cool concept. This is my very first build of this year, with many more builds to come. I mean, hopefully, of course. However, this is a 2007 gaming PC build. 10 years old. Not to the day, because some of these parts came out like later in the year, but... Now, some of these parts may be uh, recognized by you if you've seen the Q6600 video I did a couple months ago, but that was not the intention. I wanted a different motherboard, one that supported Crossfire, however, that didn't really work out. I had issues getting it to work well, and then um, I couldn't overclock very high on that one. So another letdown was I couldn't do Crossfire, it was just really poorly supported with the graphics cards I had. I couldn't find drivers for the graphics cards like anywhere. And with Crossfire, either the system wouldn't go beyond the Windows 7 welcome screen, or it'd work for like 20 seconds and then freeze, or it would work, but everything would take four minutes longer than it should. So I had to abandon Crossfire, unfortunately. Anyway, here's the final specs. The Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600. It's a very popular processor, and I'm positive you know all about this one. A quad core at the stock speed of 2.4 gigahertz, but I was able to overclock to 3.35 gigahertz. I've gotten it all the way to 3.5 in the past, but I had much better cooling then. This time I used the popular Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. I know this isn't from 2007, but I wanted to keep a sort of aftermarket cooler so that I could overclock. I also put two fans on it to keep this as cool as possible. The motherboard is the Gigabyte GAP35 DS3L. Pretty light on features, I guess. It lets me overclock, but it lacks crossfire support, which is kind of a, the biggest thing for me. And uh, it's really up to you to decide whether this is uh, pretty or not. I'm also using 8 gigabytes of 800 megahertz DDR2 memory by Kingston. There's no fancy heat spreader, but it's fine, it's nice memory, and it's extremely low profile, so I doubt any heat sink on the market will have clearance issues with this stuff. No, stop, that's not a challenge to go find one and post about it in the comments. I, I don't care, it's irrelevant. The hard drive isn't from 2007, I just needed something mechanical that worked, so I have a 750 gigabyte WD Black Drive. It's a two and a half inch drive. I don't know much else to say about it. 7200 RPM and 16 megs of cache, I guess. And here we have what truly makes this a 2007 gaming PC. I have one. Well, I have two, but we're only using one. ATI Radeon HD 2900 XT 1GB. This was one of the higher end cards of 2007. It's not very power efficient, uh, not the coolest running, but it was retailed around $500, the price of two RX 480s today, or more. 2900 XTs were originally 512 megabyte, but this one is a one gigabyte GDDR4 version on a 512 bit memory interface of which I have personally overclocked to 1044 megahertz on the memory that is. It has 320 stream processors, for the comparison, the RX40 has 2,304 stream processors. The clock speed of the GPU itself is 700, 743 megahertz, though I have overclocked to about 800 megahertz. The case is the Antec 900. I don't know exactly when this came out. Uh, some evidence after writing this script tells me that it was around 2007, but it's gone through more than one revision. It's not exciting. Mine has been edited a little bit. There used to be a 200 millimeter fan on top, but it's been changed out with a to a 120 millimeter with a grill on it. Anyway, it's a pretty bad case and I thought it would be perfect for this build being bad, like the rest of the build. Lastly, the power supply, which kind of makes you question if this is allowed to be called a 2007 build. Anyway, it's a CX600M from Corsair, semi-modular and 80 plus bronze. It's plenty of juice for the setup. However, it was going to be a 750 watt uh, if I could get the crossfire working. Now, in terms of how much I spent compared to how much the stuff cost when it came out, is shown here. After 10 years, things really do lose their value. And to find these prices, I went on the Wayback Machine and looked up Newegg from 2007. I spent $40 on a brand new Q6600, like a year ago or something, but you can pick up a used one for like $15 off eBay. I'm using the retail price of $266, which it was reduced to on July 22nd, 2007. I'm pretty sure the motherboard wasn't much over $100. While eight gigabytes of RAM was pretty expensive, almost $600, about $300 per four gigabyte set. 
The hard drive, I sort of pretended it was a 500 gigabyte drive since it doesn't really matter in these tests. The final prices are pretty far apart and mid to late 2007, a system like this would have cost you $1,800. Compare this to a modern $1,800 computer, which I kind of allocated a similar amount of money for each of the parts. Don't critique me for the parts I use, I, I don't care so much as I just wanted to get the price point similar. You can check out all three of those PC part picker links down in the description. Now for the benchmarks, I wanted a good blend of modern games and games from around 2007. All but two of the games are running at the resolution of 1680 by 1050, which was the higher resolution of 2007. And in case you're wondering, I was using Windows 7 as well for these tests. So first we have Cinebench and pulling 336 CB actually puts us ahead of the i3-2120 that I have. I just have some other CPUs here for reference. CSGO medium settings, we can see playable, well, not optimal FPS for this game, but people deal with worse. Tomb Raider 2013 on low settings. I do realize I could have turned the resolution down instead to find a perfect match between texture quality and FPS, or in resolution. However, I didn't, so whatever. GTA 5 was super hard to run at lowest settings and the lowest resolution of 800 by 600. I could still only pull an average of 12 FPS. Lastly, Doom completely failed to run. So Now for the older games, we have Oblivion, which is one of my favorite Elder Scrolls games. Released in 2006, however, the DLC Shivering Isles was released in 2007. Even on very high settings, I was still getting 57 FPS average. The first Bioshock, a fantastic game on medium settings. It could get 62 FPS on average. Would you kindly leave a like on this video if you're also a fan of the Bioshock series? Team Fortress 2, a very popular game that people still worldwide play today, released in 2007. On medium settings, I was getting playable frame rates. But can it run Crisis? Well, to my expectations, no. It couldn't run it at 1680 by 1050. It couldn't even run on high settings. I was limited to 720p on medium settings, and both this graphics card and the game were released the same year. And it was a high-end graphics card for its time. Other things that might be looking at, the Q6600 managed to stay below 60 degrees, which is nice. However, the graphics card is kind of a different story. First of all, it's loud, being a blower style cooler, which also makes it a little hotter. I idle at 50 degrees at 30% fan speed. Under load, it's usually around 71 degrees and 38% fan speed, but I've seldom seen it touch 90 degrees and not go beyond 38% fan speed. 10 years later, and I don't see much of this still plausible. Like I pointed out in my video about the Q6600, you could get away with using it today. I just can't say the same about this graphics card. It may look aesthetic with its flamey decal and partial backplate, but it just isn't optimal for anything today, unless you want a heater in your room or something. Anyway, thank you for watching. You feel free to subscribe for plenty more content coming soon, and I'll see you next time.